Price 17 TV, baby. Back at it with another one player. I got the throwback hat on because I got a throwback story. So this is when um, I moved back to the TL for a short time. From like 95 to like 96 towards the end. Then we moved back, moved back to the Bronx. So um, I used to have friends in Tracy. But I used to go from my grandma's in Tracy back to my mama's in San Francisco. But then I I actually signed up for some kind of community school there, which was a Asian school, which was mad cool because I always was good friends with with all kind of Asians, Filipino, Vietnamese, Cambodian. My whole life, I grew up around Asians in the L's. That's what there was a lot of Asians there. Mexicans and blacks, so I got along with everybody. That's who I went to school with, like you know, as a kid. So I was always raised around all kind of different races, which was fine to me. So I used to bring, well, not used to bring him when I brought this one kid one time, and he was like, "Yeah, he was a little gang banger, a little hard motherfucker, try, little little tough dude." And Tracy, back then, he was tough. He was, he was fucking motherfuckers up and all kind of shit. He wasn't no punk. But the only thing is, he had a little hair run problem. He's doing that tar with the plate, with the, with the, um, what they call that shit? Lactose with the spoon. I watch him like, bro, what is you doing? Oh, man. Sniffing it. Not, not it now. Oh, just, just, just crazy shit. So one day, he asked me, could he come with me? To San Francisco, he wanted to get the fuck out of the little town from it. I was like, yeah, sure. You can come up there for the weekend. So we take the Greyhound, and we get to San Francisco. So now we take take a bus that brings us all the way down Gary Street. Because my mama lived on Gary between Hyde and Larkin, across from the cab service. So we coming down Gary, and at this time, the host drove moved from O'Farrell up to Gary, so now that you had hoes on Gary and hoes on a, a, a Pharaoh, and they would walk the block, walk around the block, looking for dates, because there's a lot of hotels there, a lot of rich white fools that pay top money for some pussy, so we come in on the bus, he's like, what the fuck, all these bitches, I said, bro, this the hostro, I told you I lived on the hostro, but he never seen no hostro. So we go upstairs, he drop his bag off, we blow one down, we got the, uh, <clears throat> y'all remember the St. Eyes Special Brews? I used to fuck with the berry ones, so we drinking that, and we leaving outside, and we walking down the host row, and he's tripping out so bad that all these bitches know my name, I'm like, I live on the host row, I walk past him all day with my dog, and they love my dog, and they know my name. I know their names, and they speak. So he's just so fucking tripped out <clears throat> that I know all these hookers. And the funny part is my little brother, right? We get free condoms. Well, not my little brother, but me. I will go get free condoms. And they give you a brown bag with about 50 of them goddamn things, right? And the funny thing is I was at... That time, my son was was not born, so I was just with her. So I really wasn't even using the condoms. I'm not gonna lie to you. It, I was just fucking her at that time. So, so my little brother goes out there on the whole stro and selling condoms for a dollar each. At like, how old was he? Like eleven, and they loved his little ass. They be giving him two dollars. They pinch his cheek. He thought he thought he was the man. He come back with like twenty two dollars off condoms, selling to all the hoes. All the hoes knew him. So the kid I was with, he was tripping, and it was just barely getting dark. So now all the hoes is out because it's dark now. So there's so many hoes there now. It's like twice as much as he seen when we came on the bus. So we go down the whole stroll, right? 
And then we turned down, was it Jones? Yeah, Jones. Wait, wait. Yep, Jones. So we came down Jones. Now we're going to like the hood hood. Now we start saying, hey, should we be going this way? I'm like, yo, this is my neighborhood. I go through here all the time. So we're going through here. And he starts getting paranoid, man. I'm talking about noid, noid, noid. We get down towards Eddie Black in front of Bo Decker Park. He lost it when he seen these motherfuckers slamming dominoes on the garbage can. Talking mad shit. A motherfucker laid out here in the curb. White Irish rose half done. This motherfucker sleeping. Yeah, it was different. Motherfuckers spitters. All, like, it was different. It was different. He never seen no fast life shit like this only on the fucking movie. So this kid thought I was actually living in a movie. So we get back home and he's like, man, that, that's crazy. You go down there all the time. I said, bro, I live here. I was raised here when I was a kid. This is just the L's. It's just normal to me. But when you come from Tracy, California in the 90s and go to the Tenderloin in the 90s, boy, it's it's a big shock. And if you ain't been in it, then you're going to fear it. You're going to be nervous because there's too much shit going on. It's too fast. You got hookers. You got dope dealers. You got pimps. You got addicts. You got you got drunks laying in the gutter. You got stick-up kids. You got it all. You got undercovers. Dressed as bums trying to buy and but you got it all. You ain't never seen this shit in a little town. This some big city shit. So we get back home and the next day I take him to another part, like way downtown by like Market Street. And we got some weed bags. We got a little bike. We start selling some bags. I'm not gonna front. He sold a few bags. He did that. But as soon as we got Got there back, back home. He started getting sick because he needed that fucking black. He was getting sick. And the funny part is I could have got the shit for him out there. No problem. But I wasn't doing that shit. I wasn't going to go buy this kid some hair on because he fucking sick. No fucking way. He was like 17. I was like 16. I'm not doing that. That's trash. I consider him a friend, too, and I grew up around Heron and Needles and motherfuckers being sick. Oh, dear, I'm not. No. Uh -uh. So at that point in time, he was like, OK, well, I need to get on the next Greyhound bus. Got his ass on that Greyhound bus. He took his ass back to Tracy. He got his fix. He wasn't sick. And every time he seen me. And we was in front of some motherfuckers. He would tell that story about walking down the Hostro and walking down Jones and him fucking losing his mind when he seen these motherfuckers playing dominoes on a garbage can talking shit. And the dude was in the gutter, looked like he was dead with a half a white Irish rose left. He was passed the fuck out. So Christ 17, man, just uh, throwing you a little throwback. Like the hat, you know what I'm saying? That's a fact about people who think they gangster until they see some shit that's too fast for them and they looking for the quickest way out to go home. It wasn't just he was sick off the hair on. He was fucking scared. He was he ain't never seen this kind of shit in his whole life. And the funny shit is out. Always tell motherfuckers shit, and they always think I'm lying. Nah, nah, it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. You over here with me in Tracy. Nah, you ain't doing all that. Then when I bring their ass, oh, my God. I downplay the shit, to be real with you. I downplay it. When they, when they get there, it's ten times as bad is what I say, because... If I tell them what's really going on, you think they really going to want to come and chill with me in San Fran? Hell fucking no. Hell no. Like this other kid who tried to come out there and move with me. Okay? 
I'm downtown hustling. You supposed to be holding me down. We smoke a blunt. I'm down there getting money. This girl named China. There's so many Chinas, so you can't pinpoint who it is. This girl named China. She was holding me down. She was hustling, and she was helping me get my shit off. So this motherfucker is supposed to be holding me down, right? And like 30 minutes into it, he walked back to my crib, rang the bell. They done rang him in. My mom, her dude, of her OG named Chicago, they all asked him, where Joey at? Oh, he's down there on Leavenworth. So why you up here then? Aren't you supposed to be, you know what I mean, with him? Yeah, but you know, I got tired. Listen here, man. If you go with somebody and you out of town hustling, Getting some money. You never leave your partner, man. You never leave him at all, man. It's not how you do shit. So after that shit, check it. He was trying to live there. He couldn't even get on GA. He he was so game goofy, he didn't even know how to get food stamps. As soon as I turned 18, my mama sent my ass right down to GA Got the form, told me to fill this shit out, told me what the fuck to say, and I had aid, and I had food stamps. Yep, had to sweep the motherfucking Turk Street and Mason a few times, but I was getting my, well, I think it was $172 every week, no, every, every two weeks, and I forget how many stamps, but I was able to help out now, because now my mom couldn't get no more dough for me, so now it's time for me to man up and bring some motherfucking dough inside this crib. So, dude, he just couldn't, he just couldn't figure this shit out. He's like a big, big slow motherfucker. I'm like, bro, what's up? So, he left. He couldn't handle the L's neither. All that shit was too fast for all my peoples. And, you know, you try to explain something, tell somebody or friends that's not from the place you from, hey, when I lived there, I was doing this, this, and the third. And they're sitting back like, yeah, fucking right. And you're doing what here? Well, in this little town, you you can't do what you do in the big city. That's a fact. That's an absolute fact. It's, it's not the same scenery. It's not the same action. It's not the same pace. It's not fast enough. So, send his ass home. And then, you know... Their moms and them ended up moving back to the Bronx. And I kicked back, chilled, and then I eventually moved back. But even when I took my cuzzo to New York, this was probably about six, seven years back or or less. Time's been flying. When we got back to California... All he could say is, cuz, I, bro, I thought you was full of shit. He said, everything you told me was way more than what I expected. Your people treated me like they knew me your whole life. They treated my son like gold. And that's how it's supposed to be, you know. But it's always hard for somebody to, to believe you when you talk about living in In places like the Tenderloin, Bronx, Oakland, Chicago, Houston. The lifestyles are so fast and so crazy. People won't believe your stories. And so that you bring people to that city and let them walk in your shoes for the few days that they are there. And then, it's a whole different light then. Then the motherfucker be like, man, I thought you was full of shit, but you downplayed it. This is way more than what I expected because I don't go bragging about, oh man, the Bronx is, oh, the tender look. Listen, I lived in some fucked up places, had to adapt to my environment. That's what I did. And the people that I met in the trenches is the ones I trust with my life, not the ones that I met in different spots. You know what I'm saying? But. 
That's how it goes. Christ 17 with another one hitting you back to back with the throwback hat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to catch you on the flip side and like, subscribe, comment, and please share my videos, please. Thank you very much and have a blessed day. Christ 17 at you again real soon, player.